Wendy is an art teacher. This morning, someone pranked her by putting glue on her coffee mug. She questioned three suspects. Blair says, I didn't do it. I was too busy painting these beautiful flowers. Jason says, I overslept and came to the studio later than you. And Zara says, why would I do that? You're my favorite teacher. Who did it? It was Zara. There's a glue pen in her pocket. Wendy gives her students a task and leaves the studio. After a while, she returns and sees this painting. She says, wow, who painted this masterpiece? Three students claim to be the author of the painting. Can you guess who tells the truth? To solve this mystery, we should take a look at their palettes. Only this student has all colors that match the painting. Wendy goes outdoors to buy some food for lunch. Suddenly, she sees a cyclist lying on the ground. Can you guess what happened here? In fact, the car hit the ketchup bottle. The cyclist just fell nearby and got stained. Wendy receives a delivery. Three identical boxes with artist supplies. All boxes are labeled incorrectly. Wendy needs to label all boxes correctly by opening just one of them. Can you help her? Since all three boxes contain the wrong items, Wendy should open the third box. If it contains watercolor, the first box will definitely have brushes, and the second box, watercolors and brushes. And if she finds brushes in the third box, the first one will contain both watercolors and brushes, while the second one, watercolors only. The delivery guy walks outside and yells, Hey, call the police! Someone stole my car! The police begin an investigation and find these three suspects. One of them is a thief. Can you guess who? The first guy is just coloring his fence, and the third one is a gardener. But the second guy is hiding a lockpick in his shirt pocket, so he's the thief. Wendy comes to a party. Three guys invite her to dance, but one of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? The first guy is just wearing a werewolf costume. The second one has some scratches, but it proves nothing. But the third one has a real wolf tail. After the party, Wendy wakes up in a cell made of ice. She only has a pickaxe in her hand. Meanwhile, her best friend Zach is locked in a similar cell with a drill. Can you predict who will escape? Only Wendy will escape. Zach can't use a drill without electricity. The next day, Wendy arrives at the art studio. She leaves her takeaway coffee at the desk and goes to the toilet. Wendy returns and finds out that someone had drunk her beverage. She checks the cup surface for fingerprints, but she only finds her own traces. Wendy questions three suspects among students. Blair says, Sorry, I've been washing my brushes in the sink. I didn't look at your desk. Jason says, Sorry, I don't like coffee. And besides, I've been streaming stories for my followers. And Robin says, I was changing in the dressing room to be a model for portrait class. Can you spot the thief? It was Jason. Take a look at his back pocket. He's hiding rubber gloves. That's why he didn't leave any fingerprints. Wendy receives an emergency call. Someone had stolen paintings from her art studio gallery. Wendy interrogates three suspects among the visitors. Sarah says, I came here to buy some of your paintings, but when I entered the gallery, the walls were empty. Jill says, I went blind seven years ago, so I didn't see anything. I only visit this gallery to use your toilet. And Robert says, Why would I rob this place? 
I'm the major investor. Who's lying? Jill, if she's really blind, why did she bring this photo camera with her? Wendy carries out entrance exams for art students. One of these three artists is left-handed. Can you guess who? It's the third guy. It's easier for lefties to hold a palette in their right hand and paint with their left. This way, his left hand works and the right one stays static. During exams, one guy named Bobby gets very sick and faints. Wendy calls the ambulance and takes him to the hospital. She's just met Bobby, so she doesn't know his relatives. But still, Wendy manages to notice his wife in the hospital right away. Can you spot her too? It's the first lady. They have identical tattoos. And the third lady has a similar mole on her cheek. So she's probably Bobby's sister. Doctors suspect poisoning, so they keep Bobby in the hospital to make tests. Meanwhile, Wendy returns to the studio and questions three witnesses among the applicants. Sheila says, Bobby didn't look healthy in the first place. I don't blame him. Everyone was stressed out during exams. Sam says, I have no idea who poisoned him, but this person is heartless. And Xavier says, I think Bobby's just pretending to be ill to get accepted out of pity. The next day, Bobby calls Wendy with the test results. He was poisoned. Wendy calls the police right away and they arrest one of the witnesses. Can you guess who and why? Sam, he knew about the poison before the test results were ready. The next morning, Wendy enters the studio and sees that someone has left a hot mess. Canvases are torn and paints are spilled all over the floor. Can you count all the brushes in this room? Thirteen. What about the glass jars? Can you count the exact number? There are eight glass jars in this studio, including this broken one. Wendy asks her three students, who's responsible for this mess? Nina replies, I think it was David. He never washes his hands and clothes. He's such a weirdo. David says, it was Nina. She's just jealous because her paintings weren't selected for an art exhibition. And Amber says, I don't know who did it. Yesterday, I was feeling sick and stayed home. Who's responsible for this mess? Take a look at the canvas frames. They're all signed. The only canvas that wasn't torn has David's name on it. Therefore, he ruined the studio and his rival's works. Wendy asks her students to the park for an en plein air class. Can you see any weird details in this area? This is an apple tree. But why are there so many oranges under it? Two students have painted almost identical pictures. Can you help Wendy find three differences? Here they are. What about these portraits? Can you spot three differences? over here. After the class, Wendy is trying to leave the park and gets lost. She has to walk through this confusing maze. Can you help her find the way out? Only the first path is correct. On the way home, Wendy enters a supermarket. Can you count the number of cacti?
six. Someone had broken the most expensive car in the parking lot near Wendy's apartment building. The police interrogate three witnesses to find out who is guilty. Carl says, This is my car. I parked it as usual and went home. Wendy woke me up with her call. Gia says, I was just having a yoga class in a studio nearby. This car belongs to my ex-boyfriend Carl. Too bad he loved this car more than me. And Peter says, Carl's my neighbor, but he's not my best friend, if you know what I mean. I've been working all day and just arrived. Who broke Carl's car? It was Gia. She's hiding a baseball bat inside her yoga mat. Just look at this. A car has crashed into a restaurant window, smashing it. Uh -oh. Detective Harris has come to investigate the case. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas. But each of them claims that the other person did it. Can you help the detective figure out who is lying? It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and another customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him $5.05. Adam paid, went outside, and called the police to report an emergency. Why did he do it? The cash register showed 1835, but the cashier said 505, which looks like SOS. Detective Harris was walking along the street when he heard some noise. He decided to check out what had happened. It turned out that some man had grabbed an elderly lady's bag and run away. The detective ran in the direction the witnesses showed him. After he turned the corner, he saw three doors. He knocked on the first one. The apartment owner, Patrick, opened the door. The man told the detective he'd just returned from a long run. Another man, Jerry, opened the second door. He said he'd been playing basketball behind his house. The third apartment belonged to Raymond, a musician. He had just finished composing a new piece of music. After talking to all these people, Detective Harris understood who the criminal was. Have you figured it out? The thief is Jerry. He claimed he'd been playing basketball, but he was holding a football while talking to the detective. Sarah and her sister, Mary, were doing some shopping. When they were leaving a grocery store, Sarah pointed at some young man and exclaimed, Look, my nephew is over there. Her sister replied, Oh, right, but it's not my nephew. How is it possible? The young man is Mary's son. Gemma returned from Asia and brought a precious porcelain figurine. She organized a party and invited all her friends to tell them about her journey. They had a great time, but after her friends left, the woman realized the figurine had oh, disappeared. No. She called the police and showed them the photo she had taken at the party. One of the officers immediately realized who had stolen the figurine. Did you understand it too? It was this girl. She hid the figurine under her hat. At 9 a.m., Ethan got a call from his friend, an owner of a large business. The man said that a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on his desk the evening before, but now it was nowhere to be found. Ethan immediately came there to question his friend's employees. Soon, he had three suspects. Walter said he'd spent the previous evening at the movies. Joan had dinner with her friends, and Zachary visited an art gallery. It didn't take Ethan long to understand who was lying. Do you know it too?
It was Walter. His ticket isn't torn. It means he didn't enter the movie theater. Now, look at these hands and try to figure out which person is married. If you look at the first hand attentively, you'll realize it doesn't belong to a grown-up person. On the second hand, there is a mark left by a ring, but there's no ring itself. It must mean that the person is no longer married. On the third hand, there's no ring either, but it's the right hand, and we wear wedding rings on the left hand. So out of these three, this person is most likely to be married. Okay, the next challenge is for you. Look at these three men. They're at the airport. Which of these guys is married? All of these men are holding their passports and tickets in their hands. None of them is wearing a wedding ring. But pay attention to the man sitting on the bench. On his ticket, it's written, family discount. So, he must be the one who's married. Now look at this picture attentively. Does anything strike you as strange? It's winter, but butterflies are flying around the snowman. Now, try to figure out what's wrong with this image. It's the snowman again. Instead of a carrot, his nose is made of broccoli. And the last image for you to analyze. Why does the guy on the right need ski poles if he's going to snowboard? Marcus woke up in a dark basement with just one candle burning on the table. He saw three doors in one of the walls and three keys lying on the table. How many attempts will the guy need to figure out the key for each door? He'll need six attempts at the most, three of them for the first key, two attempts for the second key and two remaining doors, and just one attempt for the last key. But if Marcus is extremely lucky, he might need just three attempts. Alicia's mom asked the girl to do some grocery shopping. She gave her a shopping list and her bank card. But the woman knew her daughter was very absent-minded. That's why she gave Alicia a small note in case she forgot the card's PIN number. When the girl was at the register, she realized she had indeed forgotten the PIN. Alicia pulled the note out of her pocket and immediately remembered the code. Can you figure out what it was if the note had a fly, a cat, a person, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Alicia just had to count the number of legs of each creature. A fancy restaurant in Los Angeles was offering a promotional deal. A married couple could eat at the restaurant for half price on their anniversary. To prevent scams, the couple would need proof of their wedding date. On a Thursday evening, a couple entered the restaurant and claimed it was their anniversary, but they didn't have any proof. The restaurant manager was called to speak with the couple. When the manager asked to hear about their wedding day, the wife said, Oh, it was a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Birds were chirping and flowers were in full bloom. After nearly 10 minutes of ranting, she told the manager that today was their 28th wedding anniversary. How lovely, the manager said. However, you do not qualify for the discount. Today is not your anniversary. You are a liar. How did the manager know it wasn't their anniversary? The calendar repeats itself every 28 years. So if they were married on a Sunday 28 years ago, the day they came to the restaurant would also have to be a Sunday. But since it was a Thursday, the manager knew they were lying. 
John called the police to report that his friend Mark had disappeared. He explained that two weeks earlier, he had offered Mark to live in his beach house in Miami. He wanted his friend to enjoy some summer heat, but when John returned from a half-month-long business trip to Chile, he found out that Mark was missing. The police listened to John's story and understood the man was lying. How did they figure it out? If it was summer in Miami, it was winter in Chile. And still, John came back suntanned. It means he hadn't been to Chile. Maya was in the gym doing the workout her personal trainer had prepared for her. It was tougher and longer than her usual ones. Exhausted, Maya returned to the changing room only to find her expensive bag gone. Oh no! She immediately called the police. They had three suspects. Maya's trainer said that he had been preparing a new program for his clients. Emma, another gym goer, said she had been running on a treadmill for two hours. The cleaner said he had been washing the swimming pool. Who took Maya's bag? It was her trainer. He knew Maya was going to have a long workout and wouldn't return to the changing room anytime soon. Annika received a letter where someone asked her out. The letter was sweet, but it wasn't signed, so she didn't know who it uh -oh. was. She was guessing three guys. All of them were her college friends. Who do you think asked Annika out? Look at this sign at the end of the letter. This guy has the exact same tattoo, so I bet that the letter is from him. An office was robbed and police arrived for an investigation. The money was stolen from a drawer, but there was no trace of breaking in. The lock was fine and the windows were all locked. Look around and try to guess how the robber broke in. Look at the ventilation gate. It's slightly open. The robber must have used this way to get into the office and get out. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the robber entered the hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, there were three workers. One of them must be the robber who dressed up to pretend to be a doctor. Can you tell who? It's the man in the middle. Look at his badge. There's a picture of a woman on it. He must have put on the first pair of clothes he noticed. At daylight, someone painted a wall of a museum, and the police were looking for the person who did it just an hour after it happened. They were roaming the streets of their little town, and they found three suspects. Adam said that he'd been at work and just returned. Carter said that he'd been busy painting his fence. Blake said that she'd been walking her dog and didn't know anything about what had happened. Who is guilty? It's Carter. He has paint on his hands, and it indeed goes in line with his alibi that he was painting the fence. But his fence is red, and the paint on his hands is blue. Just like the painting on the museum's wall. Mrs. Roberts, a math teacher, returned to the classroom after visiting a principal's office oh, and no. took a sip of her coffee. She had to spit it out immediately, because instead of coffee, there was blue ink inside. Can you tell which student pranked her? It's this one. Look at his hand. It has ink stains on it. Mrs. Taylor works in a selection committee of a big organization specialized in sustainable and green development. There is an open position for a researcher and she's looking through the applicants. Many of them are fake, either sent by underqualified people or generated by robots. Her task is to filter out real applicants and she needs your help. Let's start with this one. What do you think? Is it a real application? No, it doesn't seem so. This girl was born in 2003, so she's 19 years old. 
She's way too young to have a PhD. She must be lying. Okay, here's another one. What do you say? This seems to be another fake. Look at his birthday. There was no February 29th in 1991. This application must have been generated by a robot. Okay then, here's the next candidate for you. What's your call? This young lady seems fine. I'd recommend considering her. Here's another candidate. What do you say? He seems fine to me too. Next one, this candidate. Do you see something suspicious or is it all okay? Of course not. Look at the photo. It's some random photo of a cat. People don't use such pictures in their CVs. It must be a computer-generated fake. Okay, one last candidate to consider. In or out? What do you think? It says that this person is from Narnia. Narnia is a fictional place. It doesn't exist in real life. So this CV must be fake too. A woman called the police and reported that she was robbed. She said that she was in a restaurant bathroom, fixing her makeup when someone attacked her from behind. She couldn't see the person and didn't know what they looked like. The police didn't believe her. Why? The woman was fixing her makeup, so she was looking in the mirror. If someone tried to approach her from the back, she would definitely see the person. So she lied and made up the whole story. Mrs. Cook went on vacation with her three daughters, Kaya, Ruby, and Emma. They were on the beach, and Mrs. Cook had to leave to solve some business issues. The girls stayed, but their mother banned them from going into the water without her supervision. So, they were supposed to read or build sandcastles. When Mrs. Cook returned, she knew that one of her daughters didn't listen to her. Which one? It's Kaya. Look, her hair is wet. This wouldn't happen if she didn't go into the water. There was a robbery in a neighborhood. Someone stole the seeds of rare and beautiful flowers from Mrs. Patterson, which she brought from abroad. The police interrogated several neighbors. Mr. Clark said, I don't work in my garden at all. Mrs. Moore said, Mrs. Patterson showed me these seeds and gave me a couple of them, but I'd never steal anything. Mr. Campbell said, I'd mind my own business. Who stole the seeds? It was Mr. Clark. He said that he didn't take care of his garden, but his garden looks way too nice to be abandoned. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Rellum came back home after a long and fun day at a club and asked her daughters what they'd been doing. Hannah said that she'd been watching TV all day. Elle said that she'd spent a day in the water park. Ava said that she and her friends had had a candy-eating marathon. Still, Mrs. Rellum could tell that one of her daughters lied and had actually spent all day studying. Who was it? It was Hannah. Look, the TV is unplugged, but there's a book with her in bed. She's definitely been reading it. On the weekend, Kira and her friends were supposed to celebrate a birthday of a friend online, but Kira didn't feel like it and didn't show up. On Monday, in school, she explained that something had happened and she hadn't had electricity or internet all day. So she'd spent the day in front of the computer writing her midterm paper. Her friends didn't believe her. Why?
If there was no electricity, she wouldn't be able to work on her computer because it doesn't work without electricity. I'll keep checking how attentive you are, and here are some more tasks for you. Now I'll show you two apartments and you have to figure out which one of them was robbed. Ready to start? Here's the first pair. What do you say? This apartment has a broken window, so obviously it's this one. Okay, great. Now the next one. Two apartments of two different people. Which one was robbed? This one is way too trash to be a regular mess. I bet it was robbed. Another pair of apartments. Can you see which one someone had broken in? There are dirt stains on the floor. Someone was up here in boots. So I think that's the apartment that was robbed. Okay, we'll keep looking at apartments. But now your task is to say who do you think lives there? What profession does the person have? Let's start out easy. What about this apartment? Paintings, brushes, it definitely belongs to an artist. What about this one? Do you have any ideas? Punching bag, boxing gloves, dumbbells, and some other sports equipment. I'd say there's a boxer living there. Take a closer look here. What are your thoughts? A huge desk, many monitors and keyboards, a microphone, a headset, posters of some video games. I bet it's a room of a gamer or streamer. What about this nice and clean room? Do you see something that could give away the profession of the person who lives there? There's a ballet bar and there are also some tutus in the wardrobe. It's the room of a ballerina. And some more tasks for you. I'll show you some photos and you'll have to find what's wrong or odd about them. Here's the first one. What do you say? There are people on the surface of the moon, but they're not wearing any spacesuits. Another space-related picture. Do you see a mistake? Look closer. It's not the moon, it's Saturn. What about this photo? Do you see something odd here? Look at the way this guy is eating a banana. Cassie won a trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives. She goes there on a boat along with three other hotel guests. One of these billionaires is fake. Can you guess who? This guy sneaks silverware from the buffet and puts it in his bag. If he's really rich, why would he need that? Speaking of imposters, one of the boat crew members doesn't belong here. Can you guess who? This waitress hides a police badge under her floral garland. So she's probably working undercover. Finally, Cassie comes ashore. Three porters offer to carry her suitcase. Can you help her choose the right guy? The first guy is a runaway criminal. See this poster on the pier? The second guy is a ghost. He's too transparent for a human being. Therefore, Cassie should choose the third guy. 
the hotel manager offers Cassie three options to choose from. A room on the eighth floor with a gorgeous sea view. A luxurious apartment on the second floor with a garden view. Or a separate authentic bungalow on the shore. What would you choose? The first option doesn't exist because the hotel is only a five-story and there's neither an air conditioner nor a fan inside this bungalow, so Cassie should choose the second option. On the beach, Cassie meets triplets, Sienna, Gemma, and Emma. Emma borrows $20 from Cassie. The next morning, Cassie meets one of the triplets in the lobby, but they're so identical that Cassie can't distinguish them. We know for sure that Sienna always tells the truth, while Gemma and Emma always lie. What three-word question should Cassie ask in order to get back her $20? The correct question is, are you Gemma? Sienna, who only speaks the truth, would say no. Gemma, who always lies, would also say no. And Emma would say yes, because she's a liar. Therefore, if the answer is yes, Cassie can demand her money. And if the answer is no, Cassie can ask Sienna or Gemma to remind Emma about her debt. After breakfast, Cassie goes diving. She sees a lot of identical clownfish underwater, but one of them doesn't belong here. Can you spot the odd fish out? This one over here. Underwater, Cassie finds a treasure chest, but it's locked. Can you help her crack the combination lock? There are three turtles painted on the treasure chest. Each turtle has a certain number of rings on its shell. It's a hint. If we count the rings, she'll get the code. Eight, Four, five. Cassie opens the treasure chest and finds a pearl necklace. She goes to the local jewelry market hoping to sell it. John says, This jewelry is not so precious, but I can offer you $50 for one pearl. Noah says, Trash! These pearls are fake! Five dollars! This is my last price! And Mia says, Madam, we can sell it at auction. Rich guys will pay hundreds of dollars for this necklace. I can be your agent and take 15% of the revenue. What do you say? One of these guys is a scammer. Can you guess who? Noah is wearing another person's work badge. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's identity. Cassie wants to buy a new swimsuit. She walks into a fitting room and sees these three pairs of legs. Can you guess who's broke? All three women have relatively new sandals, but let's take a look at their toenails. The first lady has an excellent fresh pedicure. The second one doesn't have any nail polish but maybe she just prefers to look au natural. And the third lady has toenails with peeled nail polish. Therefore, she's the one who's broke. In the hotel lobby, Cassie meets two of her roommates, Tina and Jeff. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who just by looking at this picture? Tina is a werewolf. She has handcuffs on her leg. Cassie goes to the beach to sunbathe. There's a vampire on one of these sun loungers. Can you spot where exactly? This pile of ash on the right used to be a vampire. There's a wedding ceremony on the beach. Unfortunately, after dinner, all the males at this party turned into zombies. Can you guess which zombie is her husband?
It's this guy. He's wearing a ring. In the evening, Cassie arrives at an abandoned haunted village to film a video for her vlog. She spots five weird things about this place right away. Can you see them too? These orchids have teeth. Who left these huge claw marks on the wall of this house? It's summertime, but there's a snowman in the garden. There are two moons in the sky, and this cow doesn't have any shadow. Cassie returns to the hotel and sees a hot mess. Someone has been rummaging through her stuff. She interrogates three suspects. The maid says, I cleaned your room in the afternoon. All your clothes and personal belongings were neatly folded in the closet. When I left, I locked the door. The plumber says, I also entered your room in the afternoon to fix the toilet. Luckily, everything's fine now. And Cassie's neighbor says, I was listening to music with headphones, so I didn't notice anything weird. Who's lying? It's the plumber. He said he fixed the toilet, but it's still clogged. One of the hotel guests, Peter, likes Cassie. He wants to impress her and shows her some pictures from his travel blog. But Cassie spots a fake right away. How? Take a look at the wind direction in this picture. In the background, the wind is blowing to the left, but his hair is blowing to the right. Therefore, Richard had photoshopped himself. Someone had broken the most expensive statue in the hotel lobby. The manager interrogates four suspects among the guests to find out who's guilty. Melanie says, I'm not into art. I haven't even noticed this statue before. Steven says, Sorry, dude. I've been out skydiving all day long. Zach says, Don't worry. That sculpture was tasteless. I'm an art dealer and I can get you a new one. And Sophie says, I was chilling at the spa, so I didn't see anything. Can you spot who's guilty? <laughs> Melanie, she lost her left earring in the very middle of the crime scene. Cassie gets an invitation from three hotel guests. Gail shows her picture of a fancy villa and says, I'm a billionaire. You're welcome to come over to my villa and stay for as long as you want. Bella hands her two tickets to the opera and says, We can go together tomorrow night. And Ricardo just shows her the keys to his boat and offers a ride across the globe. But only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you help Cassie make the right choice? There's a for sale sign near the villa, so Gail's offer doesn't look trustworthy. Take a closer look at the gate on the opera ticket. It expired centuries ago, so Cassie should trust Ricardo. Cassie goes to the hotel restaurant to have dinner. There's a butterfly hiding among the buffet. Can you find it? It's over here. Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party. So they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel, only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, 
do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything, from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option, so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was, what fastens two people, yet touches only one? Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course! Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic. So, Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose? Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge. But the first invitation says, Sunset Lodge. So this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple. So they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift. But all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. 
It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That could only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees, watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. You walk through the streets. There's a warning on a post about lizard people charging at the inhabitants of the city. You remember investigating this case, but you couldn't find these reptiles. Now you need to go to the park. For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents there. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she is the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife that you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need. So you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on this girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're walking back to the car and hear some screams coming from the water. A woman is calling for help. You run into the river and swim toward the drowning woman. But when you approach her, you see three people. They're all screaming, but only one of them is a real human and needs help. The rest are mermaids who want to lure you to their kingdom. How can you find out who the real woman is?
Just dive and check who has a fishtail. Emily has won the lottery, and now she can choose her prize. There are three options. A brand new Ferrari, a Gucci handbag, and Jimmy Choo shoes. Take a closer look at them and tell which prize she should choose. Emily should choose the handbag. The logos of Ferrari and Jimmy Choo are wrong, so the car and the shoes must be fake. So three best friends have finally met in a cafe to discuss some business. Val orders a big cake with fruit. Simon asks for a glass of soda. And Leo takes an energy bar out of his bag and starts eating it. The waiter brings the cake and the soda and leaves. Simon drinks from his glass, but Val doesn't touch the cake. Why? There are slices of tomatoes and cucumbers on it. Val asked for a fruitcake. An archaeologist makes his way through the dense jungle of an unknown island. He's looking for a valuable treasure, a 2,000-year-old ancient cup. If he manages to get it, he can sell the artifact for millions of dollars. He comes out to a small lake with a waterfall. He dives under the water and notices two caves. The cup is inside one of them. Where should the archaeologist go? Think faster, he's running out of air. He needs to swim to the left cave. Air bubbles are floating out, which means there is some dry land inside the cave. Three guys are sitting on the sidewalk. They're all in dirty clothes and look tired. Each of them hopes to get some money from people who are passing by. But nobody helps them, since one of these homeless people only pretends to be poor. Passersby see this and don't want to help any of them. Who do you think is pretending? Look at this bald guy. You can notice a smartwatch on his wrist. Samantha has been wandering through the desert for several hours. The sand is so hot that she can't touch it. Samantha notices a tent far ahead. It's definitely not a mirage. The girl quickens her pace and reaches the spot. She finds a bottle of water, two eggs, and a frying pan inside. Samantha quenches her thirst. Now she feels hungry. But it's dangerous to eat raw eggs in the desert. You can get food poisoning. Samantha decides to fry the eggs. She wanders around, trying to find some firewood, but sees nothing but endless dunes. How can Samantha cook the eggs? She can put the pan on the sand. It's hot. The sun will add to this heat, and the eggs will fry. After taking a shower, Albert realizes he's lost his wedding ring. It seems that the ring fell down the drain. Oh no, his wife will return home soon, and she'll definitely notice this disappearance. The wife enters the apartment. She looks at her husband, asks him to turn around, and pulls the ring out of his hair. It got caught there while he was in the shower. But how did the wife know the ring was there? Albert was facing her. There's a mirror behind Albert. The wife noticed the ring in the reflection. Two powerful film producers are having breakfast in an expensive restaurant. They discuss the budget for a sequel to a very successful movie that got $500 million at the box office. They speak very quietly, since they mention important details of the script. They suspect that someone might overhear them. The producers are right. Some curious people are indeed eavesdropping on their conversation. Can you find them? There's a guy at the next table holding a magazine upside down. Obviously, he isn't reading it. 
He must be listening to the producers. That girl over there is a journalist. There's a camera lens sticking out of her backpack. See? She will post a video, and fans will be able to read the producer's lips. That man is eating a salad. But you can notice a microphone hidden in his long hair. Three people are standing in line in front of an ice cream cart. The first guy is taking a cone from the seller. The guy behind him is nervous. His hands are in his pockets. The third guy is looking at something through binoculars. Which of them is a police officer? Look at the first guy. He's got a police radio in his pocket. Where's my money? The owner of the diner screams. It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no customers in the diner. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees, trying to figure out who's the thief. Linda is wearing a pair of sunglasses, jeans, and a stylish t-shirt. She also has an expensive phone. Michael is dressed in costly designer clothes. Sarah is wearing a regular jacket and a long skirt. Who do you think has stolen the money? They're all telling the truth. Look at the sign on the door. Open, it says. This means people passing by the diner see the closed sign. The employees simply forgot to turn it over, and that's why there have been no customers. Starry sky, fresh cool air, endless dunes, a small campfire, and a tent. This place is a fairy tale. Sarah has always wanted to spend a night in a desert. She takes pictures of the stars, drinks hot tea from a thermos, and enjoys life. It's a perfect night. Too perfect. The smile disappears from Sarah's face. Everything is not real. Two signs indicate that Sarah is sleeping now. What are these signs? Two moons are shining in the sky. A sea crab is looking at Sarah from the sand. But it's scorpions that usually live in deserts, not sea crabs. Mary opens her eyes and realizes that she's in an unknown place. There's a lot of trash in the room. A red lamp is flashing from the ceiling. Something must have happened here. Mary can leave through the door. It's open. But wait, she needs to take some useful stuff from the room. But what? She can only choose two items. Which ones? Mary needs to get scuba gear and a mask. Look at that small window. Fish are swimming by. Mary is underwater. The Millers and the Johnsons are going on a vacation. Can you tell which family has a daughter? Take a closer look at their suitcases. The Millers have two suitcases, but the Johnsons have three. The extra one must be their daughters, who probably just left for a while. Let's move to Norway. After the Christmas break, two twin sisters, Alicia and Ada, came to visit their mother. However, one of the sisters has a boyfriend from Thailand, who she had visited right before her mother. Can you tell which one? Norway is a cold country in the north. Also, it's winter, but unlike her twin sister, Ada is tanned. It's probably because she just spent her vacation in some warm country, like Thailand, at her boyfriend's place. So it must be her. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is a huge learning community with thousands of online classes and members from all over the world. That's where you can get inspiration and learn pretty much any skill you can only imagine. Ah, now I see where the name comes from. Let's say you want to figure out how to work in After Effects. By the way, that's exactly how this Tricky Riddles video has been made. Well, 
Skillshare is the answer. There, you'll find all kinds of classes, including the ones on how to animate illustrations. I'm talking about the course Animate Your Illustrations with After Effects, curated by motion designer and illustrator Manon Luar. You can learn how to loop and refine your animation, how to add animated textures, you name it. And want to know the best thing? The first 1,000 people who use this link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. No matter what your skill level is, Skillshare has tons of useful information for you. And it's not just creative stuff. You can find business courses, finance classes, and so much more. Ren comes home after work. He lives with his girlfriend, Maya. But she's absent, which is strange because she works from home. Ren finds this note on the fridge. After looking through the note, he calls the police and says, Please come over. Someone kidnapped my girlfriend. How did he know? Maya left an encoded hint in this list of products. The number shows which letter you should take away from each word. I from fish, A from apple, M from watermelon, and so on. And finally, we'll get, I am kidnapped. The police search Ren's apartment for clues. They find a fresh postcard from Maya's ex-boyfriend, Frank, among her documents. There's a weird poem on the back of the postcard. Frank is a literature teacher. He was always good at writing, and he couldn't make such mistakes. The officer reads the poem and realizes that Frank kidnapped Maya. How did he know? Take the first letter of each word and you'll get Maya is mine. The police decide to issue a search warrant, but Ren can't wait. He goes to Frank's house to save Maya. On the way, he sees these three people in the neighborhood. Can you spot who's suspicious? The blind guy. How would he use this common camera? Ren tries to open Frank's door, but it's locked. He has to enter a six-number code. Can you help him? This picture is a hint. If we count all the points of intersection of the circles, we'll get the code 237640. Ren enters Frank's house and spots three odd details right away. Can you see them too? The carpet is flying. There's a boot boiling on the stove. Take a look at Maya's portrait on the wall. Her eyes are moving. Ren finds Maya in the basement. She looks scared. Frank pops out of nowhere and offers Ren a deal. I'm going to tell you three facts about Maya. If you manage to spot one lie, I'll let both of you go. Ren agrees. Maya and I met at college. Snakes are her biggest phobia. And Maya was the first woman who I kissed. Can you help Ren spot one lie? Maya is wearing snake earrings. It's unlikely that she would wear them if the second fact was true. Frank tells Ren and Maya, Okay, you can go now. You can choose one of these three doors. There's a thousand venomous snakes behind the first door. There's a maze with carnivorous mutant plants behind the second door. And there's a garden with the most poisonous berries in the world behind the third door. Which way should they choose? The third one, nobody said that they have to eat the berries. Maya and Ren come home. Suddenly, a ball breaks their window. They look outside and see five teenagers playing basketball. One of them broke the window. Each makes three statements. One is false and two are true. Ken says, I didn't do it. Jessica will tell who did it. One of us is in big trouble. Love says, Mia did it. I didn't do it. I don't even like to play basketball. Victoria says, 
I didn't do it. Mia and I are good friends. Jessica doesn't know who did it. Mia says, Love lied when she said I broke the window. I had never seen Victoria before today. I've never broken a window in my life. And Jessica says, I saw Mia break it. I didn't break the window. I want to go home. Who broke the window? Mia's statements 1 and 3 must be true, since each player told only one lie. Therefore, Mia's statement 2 is false. Now the words of all the other players can then be proven true or false using this information. Since we know that Mia's statement 2 is false, Jessica's statement 1 and Love's statement 1 have to be false. Ken's statement 2 has to be false, since Jessica didn't tell who did it. So now it's obvious that Victoria did it. Maya has two friends, Claire and Naomi. They're both beauty bloggers. One of them is a beginner, while another has a million followers. Can you guess who's more popular? Naomi has more subscribers. She has a 1 million gold award from YouTube hidden on her shelf. Also, take a look at Claire's phone. She's watching Naomi's video and repeats after her. Ren invites Maya on an unusual date. They go to a farm. He takes these two pictures. Can you see any difference between them? Here they are. Ren's landlord is selling his apartment, so he asks Ren and Maya to move out. Ren decides to take some extra job to raise his income so that they could afford to rent a cozy cabin in the woods. He's been working as a graphic designer all his life, but now he's open to new options. Can you help him find the most reliable offer on his wall? He doesn't have experience to become a firefighter and the second offer is for ladies only. The remaining options are good, but only the job of a forester is ideal because it provides a free cabin, just what Ren wanted. Ren and Maya begin to pack their bags. Maya can't find these three items. Can you help her? Here they are. Maya and Ren are visiting the local farmer's market. Can you find a ghost among all these people? This lady with transparent legs. Finally, Ren and Maya arrived at their new cabin, but it's locked. They find this weird note on the door. Can you help them solve this mystery? Place every letter in this note with the one after it in the alphabet, and we get T under Rose Pot. Ren, Maya, Rose, and Mike are best friends. They gather to celebrate Thanksgiving at the cabin. They agree to buy gifts for each other. Ren buys a little statue. Maya buys a bottle of perfume. Mike buys a watch. And Rose buys a phone. The gifts were packed in identical boxes. Finally, the friends exchange gifts everyone gets someone else's box. Mike got neither a statue nor perfume, and Rose got the watch. What did Ren get? Rose got the watch, so Mike could only get the phone. It means that Ren got the perfume and Maya got the statue. In the middle of the party, Ren goes to the toilet. He leaves his phone on a table. In a while, he returns and finds out that his phone is missing. Ren asks everyone just one question. What did you do when I was in the toilet? Rose says, I was watching a movie in the living room. The story is so sweet. Mike says, I was decorating the living room. I think I heard your phone vibrating, but I didn't bother. And Maya says, 
I applied makeup in the bedroom. Do you like it? Can you guess who stole the phone? It was Mike. Ren didn't mention that his phone was gone. Maya is having brunch in a cafeteria. She's the only customer. The waitress brings her food. Maya opens a pot with soup and sees a huge spider. But thankfully, it's a toy. One of these three cafeteria workers pranked Maya. Can you guess who? It's the guy on the left. He's the only one who doesn't hold a phone. His gadget is on the stand here, filming Maya's reaction. Nelly is approaching a picturesque field. She's carrying a package. If she doesn't manage to open it before reaching the field, she won't survive. Can you guess what's in the package? Nelly is skydiving. There's a parachute in her package. After a safe landing, Nelly decides to take a walk in a sunflower field. Can you help her spot three odd things about this area? This straw man is winking. This sunflower has teeth. And there are two suns in the sky. Nelly walks too far and gets lost in the woods. She wanders around for a while and meets four guys sitting on one big tree. Can you help her rank them in order of foolishness? The fourth person is cutting the branch where he sits. So, he's the silliest. The first person is sitting on the branch that will soon be cut by the second guy. So, the first person is the second most foolish. The second person doesn't see that he's about to fall too. So, he's the third. And finally, the third guy. He's a bad person, but definitely not a stupid one. Nelly moves on and finds a highway. Three people offer to give her a ride to the nearest town. Can you help Nelly choose the safest driver? Take a look at this guy's car. Its tires are flat, and there's a puddle of engine oil spilled out of the car. Probably not the safest choice. Oh. This beautiful lady and her car are both translucent, because they're ghosts. As for this gloomy trucker, he looks pretty reliable. Yeah. Nellie enters a local coffee shop and meets two ladies. Both ladies tell her that they are daughters of a famous billionaire. Can you guess who's lying? The lady on the right is a liar. The logo on her t-shirt is fake. Therefore, she's not rich. Nellie doesn't have any money to buy food. The coffee shop manager feels sorry for her and offers Nellie a free lunch. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. People have stepped on me, but not many. I never stay full for long. I have a dark side. What am I? Can you help Nellie win her free food? The correct answer is the moon. Nellie is eating and looking through the pictures hanging on the wall. Suddenly, she sees something weird. Can you spot any odd details too? This person appears in both pictures, looking young and pretty. But the time distance between these two photos is 100 years. Nellie enters a flower shop and sees the owner putting bouquets in big vases. If he puts one bouquet per vase, he will end up with one extra bouquet. And if he puts two bouquets per vase, he will end up with one extra vase. How many vases and bouquets does he have? He has three vases and four bouquets. The flower shop owner offers Nelly a job. He has just received a delivery. There are three boxes labeled red roses, white roses, and red and white roses. Each box is labeled incorrectly. Mm. 
Nelly has just one chance to pick up a flower from any box and then label the boxes correctly. Can you help her accomplish this task? Nelly should take a flower from the box labeled as red and white roses. Since they're labeled incorrectly, this box should contain either red roses only or white roses only. Let's suppose that Nelly finds the red roses. Now she can label this box correctly. We know that the white box cannot have white roses. Therefore, now Nelly can label the remaining two boxes correctly. After earning some cash, Nelly decides to book a room in the local hotel to get some rest. The manager offers her to choose from three empty rooms. Can you help Nelly pick the best option? There are cracks in the window glass in the first room. Very unsafe. Hmm. And there's a zombie hiding under the bed in the third room. So, Nelly should choose the second one. Nelly locks herself in the room. She opens the window and stands nearby, breathing fresh air. Suddenly, she throws something out of the window. Nelly passes out very soon after doing that. That's a mystery because she's perfectly healthy and nobody did anything to her because the door is locked. Can you find any logical explanation for what happened here? Nelly decided to throw a boomerang out of the window. The boomerang went to the maximum distance and returned back straight to her head. After a while, Nelly wakes up with a headache. She goes to the local shop to buy some aspirin. She spots three odd things about this place. Can you see them too? There's corn on the shelf along with napkins and toilet paper. The announcement offers an 800% discount. That's too good to be true. And finally, the shopkeeper is wearing two pairs of glasses. Suddenly, the shopkeeper begins to yell, Someone stole my money! Uh -oh. And he locks the customers inside the shop and calls the police. They arrive and question four suspects. Maya says, I came here to buy water for my 12 o'clock yoga class. I'm 20 minutes late because of you. Bob says, What's the point of stealing cash? Everyone knows that people use cards nowadays. Hmm. Lily says, This shopkeeper is a bad person. He deserved that. And Nelly replies, Sorry, I was focusing on my own purchase. I didn't see anything suspicious. After hearing that the officers had arrested one person, can you guess who? Maya. Take a look at the clock on the wall. It's only 10 a.m. She's not late, therefore, she's lying. Nellie is walking down the street. She sees a cozy garage sale organized by Miss Green. The fixed price for any item is only $1. Amy buys an old dress. Phil takes this beautiful antique vase, and Vivienne purchases a shabby vintage suitcase. Nellie comes over to Miss Green and says, oh. Madam, you've just sold an expensive thing for a song. What does she mean? Can you guess? Vivian lifts this suitcase quite easily, so it's probably empty. And besides, it has holes in the bottom. Therefore, it can't be precious. This vase isn't antique. It has a sticker from a dollar store. Although this dress is dirty and torn, it has a large, expensive brooch pinned to it. So many gemstones can't cost just one dollar. Nellie asks Miss Green if she can use her bathroom. Miss Green says, Sure, it's at the end of the corridor. Nellie is walking down the corridor and confuses the doors. Nellie ends up in this messy kitchen. Huh? The door won't open. Can you help Nellie find a key? It's in the teapot. And Miss Green enters the kitchen and tells Nellie, I'm a witch, young lady, and I'm going to give you a gift if you manage to solve my riddle. Oh, yes. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. It starts with tea, it ends with tea, and it's full of tea. What is it? Can you solve this mystery? <laughs> the 
The correct answer is a teapot, again. Miss Green brings Nellie to her dusty basement and says, One of these three doors leads to a magical world, and the other two are fake. You have only one attempt to choose the correct door. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Can you help Nellie out? She should choose the third door. Take a look at the floor. Dusty footprints lead to the third door only, which means that doors one and two are fake. Nellie opens the third door and enters an enchanted forest. There are four ways to cross it, but all four passages are pretty dangerous. A hungry dragon is waiting for her on the first route. A massive fire is burning all over the second path. And the third path is basically a windowless tunnel. And the fourth passage is full of scorpions and snakes. Can you help Nellie choose the right path? She should pick the third way. The tunnel doesn't have windows. But who said it doesn't have an exit? Nellie walks the tunnel and finds herself in a beautiful castle. The guard says, This castle is yours if you manage to crack my riddle. I can fill a room, but I take up no space. What am I? Can you help Nellie win the castle? The correct answer is light. Yep, the police found out that several criminals were going to leave the country by plane. Unfortunately, no one knew what they looked like or how big the group was. Four suspicious men were detained and their baggage was examined. Can you figure out who is innocent? Why would a bald man need a shampoo? A supposedly blind person with a flashlight. Toothpaste without a toothbrush. It seems only the man on the left isn't a criminal. Anne invited her friends to spend a week in her house. The young people were having tons of fun. The day before they had to leave, a terrible storm started. It was pouring with rain. Strong winds were breaking trees, tearing down power lines, and causing power outages all over the place. The next morning, the weather was better. But Anne discovered that her favorite ring, with a diamond her granny had left her many years ago, was missing. She asked all her friends to come to the living room. I can't find one thing that's very important to me. Can you tell me what you were doing yesterday? Megan answered she spent most of the whole day in her room, reading. Walter said, I was practicing my electric guitar in the garage. Marie told Anne she didn't even know what the ring looked like. Anne knew right away who the thief was. Can you figure it out too? There was a power outage. It means Walter couldn't be playing an electric guitar. And Anne said nothing about the important thing being a ring. So how did Marie know it? Walter and Marie stole the ring together. A jewelry store manager called the police. Help! He shouted. My store has been robbed! When the officers arrived at the place, they couldn't see the man. Suddenly, they heard someone banging on the door. They didn't notice this door at first because it was hidden in the corner. When they unlocked it, they saw a man. It was the manager. Someone locked me in here. It must be one of the shop assistants. The police officers asked the man to call his employees. They were going to question them. Just a second, I can't find my phone. Ah, here it is. The manager didn't even start to dial the number before the officers arrested him. Why? If he was locked in the room and the phone was lying on the counter, how could he call the police? Police detective Thomas Davis was walking along the street on a winter evening. Suddenly, he saw a person in a black mask sneaking out of a house through the window. They were carrying two large bags. The detective realized it was a burglar. He ran after the stranger, but they turned the corner and disappeared. Thomas understood the criminal had hidden in one of these houses. But which one?
It can't be the house on the left. There are too many people inside. There are no footprints in the snow leading to the house on the right. It means no one has been there for quite some time. Which leaves us with the house in the middle. Nathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet. But his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight. They decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. No chores for them for one week. Not to fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make pizza. And Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. A family with two teenage children went on vacation to the seaside. They lived in a small bungalow almost right on the beach. Everything was great, at first. But two days after their arrival, the younger son went missing. The police had four suspects. They invited the guy's family to look at them. Maybe they could recognize someone. The teenager's mother didn't need more than a glance before she knew who was behind her son's disappearance. Who was it? It's the man wearing the missing guy's baseball cap. Carl, an heir to a giant fortune, was found unconscious during a wild party. His sister, Sarah, stumbled across him in the bathroom. The guy was lying on the floor, barely alive. Sarah immediately called the ambulance and police. Carl was taken to a hospital. Doctors saved his life, but the guy was still unconscious. He couldn't talk. When the police questioned Sarah, she told them that her brother had felt unwell. He went to the bathroom to freshen up. After some time, she heard some noise and went to check on him. Carl must have slipped and hit his head on the sink. After the police officers heard this story, the sister got arrested right away. Why? For one thing, it happened during a loud party. How could the girl hear any suspicious noise? Carl was also lying too far away from the sink, which was on the other side of the bathroom boy with a sister like that. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there were no flashlights in the Stone Age. All the people working in the office, Janice, Brian, Teresa, Sean, and Roy, used the fridge in the kitchen to store their lunch. On Friday, Janice opened the fridge to get her bacon and cheese sandwich she brought from home. But it wasn't there. Someone had eaten her lunch. Who was it? Well, it couldn't be Brian. There's a wet umbrella near his desk. He has just come in. Teresa is a vegan. She eats neither cheese nor bacon. Roy is on a diet, and such a sandwich is by no means light food. This means Sean was the one who stole Janice's sandwich. You bad boy. When Joe came to work, he saw his safe was open. All the money and important documents were gone. He immediately called his friend, Detective Callum. When the man arrived, Joe told him, I think it was one of my employees. They must have borrowed my key and opened the safe. Callum questioned the three people who worked for Joe. Wayne said, I don't even know what this safe looks like. And of course, I don't know which key opens it. Austin said, I'm Joe's assistant. I do have the second key to the safe, but I was on holiday and just returned. And Julia just said, I can't prove it, but I didn't do it. Who's lying? Wayne. 
No one told him the safe could be opened with a key, not a combination lock. Then, how did he know? Someone stole several expensive t-shirts in a designer clothing store. The manager told the security guard he had half an hour to find the thief. If you don't make it in time, you'll be fired! The guard rushed to watch the CCTV footage. Luckily, he managed to figure out who the thief was before his time ran out. And do you know who it was? It's the man in the dark blue sweater. His belly miraculously became larger after he spent some time in the store. He must be hiding the t-shirts under his sweater. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong here. The reflection in the mirror is all wrong. Terry was sailing around the world when his yacht got caught in a terrible storm. At one moment, the guy hit his head against the mast and lost consciousness. When he came around, he was on a beach. Unfriendly-looking locals had gathered around. Soon, Terry figured out they really didn't like strangers. They offered the guy three options. To send him to a cave filled with tarantulas, throw him into a pit swarming with yellow scorpions, or make him meet hungry lions. What should Terry choose to survive? He should opt for tarantulas. These creatures look terrifying, but they are mostly harmless to humans. Mostly. Captain Jack was a feared pirate who had robbed thousands of ships. He did it with the help of just one small trick. It allowed him to approach any ship from any country close enough to board it. What was this trick? Captain Jack had a collection of flags from different countries. Instead of using Jolly Roger, the fearsome black flag, he raised the flag of the country the ship was from. It got him immediate access. In what situation do you have more chances to survive? If you're falling from a 10-story building, or if you come across several scary snakes that look unfriendly? The snakes might not be venomous, then they won't cause you any harm. But if you're falling from a big height, well, only a miracle can… Nah, nothing's gonna save you. Bye bye Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research, but then a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I recovered, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. After a bank had been robbed, the police found a bag with money in the park. It was lying among cacti. The police officers arrested three suspects. It didn't take long to figure out who the bank robber was. Do you know who it is? It's the man on the left. He's the only one with some scratches. They must have been left by the cacti. Detective Brown stopped a man leaving a clothing store. The sales assistant claims you've stolen some expensive gloves. These are my gloves! I've had them for ages! The man exclaimed. But the detective immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They're both for the same hand. A family with two teenagers went on vacation to the seaside. They lived in a small bungalow, almost right on the beach. 
everything was great at first, but two days after their arrival, oh no. their younger son went missing. The police had four suspects. They invited the guy's family to look at them. Maybe they could recognize someone. The teenager's mother didn't need more than a glance before she knew who was behind her son's disappearance. Who was it? It's the man wearing the missing guy's baseball cap. Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When the guy came around, he found out that he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to type the correct answer and the door would open. The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the correct word and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Police detective Thomas Davis was walking along the street on a winter evening. Suddenly, he saw a person in a black mask sneaking out of a house through the window. They were carrying two large bags. The detective realized it was a burglar. He ran after the stranger, but they turned the corner and disappeared. Thomas understood that the criminal had hidden in one of these houses, but which one? It can't be the house on the left, there are too many people inside. There are no footprints in the snow leading to the house on the right. It means no one has been there for quite some time which leaves us with the house in the middle. Oliver was attacked in his apartment and taken to a hospital. The police had four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he'd been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he'd been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who is lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who'd been repairing his car, and Henry, who'd been painting, both have such clean hands. But they could have been wearing gloves. At the same time, Sophia's hands and fingers aren't wrinkled but it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. How many bricks does it take to complete a building? Just one, it will be the last one. A man wanted to buy a used car. He found a nice one, which cost $9,000. He bought it and didn't pay a dime for it. How come? When paying $9,000, you don't need to spend dimes. Now let's check your math skills. How can you write 45 using only the number 4? Forty-four plus forty-four forty-fourths. Nathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware that the guy would return at midnight. They decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. No chores for them for one week. Not to fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room and started to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. 
she was going to sell it to the competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. When they came back, Victoria was already sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down, but after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Martin was driving past a bus stop when he saw three people standing there. One of them was Monica, a woman he had a crush on. Martin also spotted Sam, his friend, and an elderly lady who looked like she was freezing. Unfortunately, Martin had a two-seater car. What should he do? He should let Sam borrow his car and stay at the bus stop with the girl he likes. This way, Sam will be able to give a lift to the elderly woman, and Martin will have more time to get to know Monica better. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police he wanted to save a bag with money, but he had to lace up his boot right in front of the emergency kit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he recovered, the money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? All emergency doors open outward. Detective Adams came to the park to have lunch in the sun, but his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running in first is the criminal. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect. I've been feeling unwell all this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. I didn't even need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure yourself, the suspect said, and indeed opened his fridge. But the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, the bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be that full. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Wendy is an art teacher. This morning, someone pranked her by putting glue on her coffee mug. She questioned three suspects. Blair says, I didn't do it. I was too busy painting these beautiful flowers. Jason says, I overslept and came to the studio later than you. And Zara says, why would I do that? You're my favorite teacher. Who did it? It was Zara. There's a glue pen in her pocket. Wendy gives her students a task and leaves the studio. After a while, she returns and sees this painting. She says, wow, who painted this masterpiece? Three students claim to be the author of the painting. Can you guess who tells the truth? To solve this mystery, we should take a look at their palettes. Only this student has all colors that match the painting. Wendy goes outdoors to buy some food for lunch. Suddenly, she sees a cyclist lying on the ground. Can you guess what happened here?
In fact, the car hit the ketchup bottle. The cyclist just fell nearby and got stained. Wendy receives a delivery. Three identical boxes with artist supplies. All boxes are labeled incorrectly. Wendy needs to label all boxes correctly by opening just one of them. Can you help her? Since all three boxes contain the wrong items, Wendy should open the third box. If it contains watercolor, the first box will definitely have brushes, and the second box, watercolors and brushes. And if she finds brushes in the third box, the first one will contain both watercolors and brushes, while the second one, watercolors only. The delivery guy walks outside and yells, Hey, call the police! Someone stole my car! The police begin an investigation and find these three suspects. One of them is a thief. Can you guess who? The first guy is just coloring his fence, and the third one is a gardener. But the second guy is hiding a lockpick in his shirt pocket, so he's the thief. Wendy comes to a party. Three guys invite her to dance, but one of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? The first guy is just wearing a werewolf costume. The second one has some scratches, but it proves nothing. But the third one has a real wolf tail. After the party, Wendy wakes up in a cell made of ice. She only has a pickaxe in her hand. Meanwhile, her best friend Zack is locked in a similar cell with a drill. Can you predict who will escape? Only Wendy will escape. Zack can't use a drill without electricity. The next day, Wendy arrives at the art studio. She leaves her takeaway coffee at the desk and goes to the toilet. Wendy returns and finds out that someone had drunk her beverage. She checks the cup surface for fingerprints, but she only finds her own traces. Wendy questions three suspects among students. Blair says, Sorry, I've been washing my brushes in the sink. I didn't look at your desk. Jason says, Sorry, I don't like coffee. And besides, I've been streaming stories for my followers. And Robin says, I was changing in the dressing room to be a model for portrait class. Can you spot the thief? It was Jason. Take a look at his back pocket. He's hiding rubber gloves. That's why he didn't leave any fingerprints. Wendy receives an emergency call. Someone had stolen paintings from her art studio gallery. Wendy interrogates three suspects among the visitors. Sarah says, I came here to buy some of your paintings, but when I entered the gallery, the walls were empty. Jill says, I went blind seven years ago, so I didn't see anything. I only visit this gallery to use your toilet. And Robert says, Why would I rob this place? I'm the major investor. Who's lying? Jill, if she's really blind, why did she bring this photo camera with her? Wendy carries out entrance exams for art students. One of these three artists is left-handed. Can you guess who? It's the third guy. It's easier for lefties to hold a palette in their right hand and paint with their left. This way, his left hand works and the right one stays static. During exams, one guy named Bobby gets very sick and faints. Wendy calls the ambulance and takes him to the hospital. She's just met Bobby, so she doesn't know his relatives. But still, Wendy manages to notice his wife in the hospital right away. Can you spot her too? It's the first lady. They have identical tattoos. And the third lady has a similar mole on her cheek. So she's probably Bobby's sister. Doctors suspect poisoning. So they keep Bobby in the hospital to make tests. 
Meanwhile, Wendy returns to the studio and questions three witnesses among the applicants. Sheila says, Bobby didn't look healthy in the first place. I don't blame him. Everyone was stressed out during exams. Sam says, I have no idea who poisoned him, but this person is heartless. And Xavier says, I think Bobby's just pretending to be ill to get accepted out of pity. The next day, Bobby calls Wendy with the test results. He was poisoned. Wendy calls the police right away and they arrest one of the witnesses. Can you guess who and why? Sam, he knew about the poison before the test results were ready. The next morning, Wendy enters the studio and sees that someone has left a hot mess. Canvases are torn and paints are spilled all over the floor. Can you count all the brushes in this room? Thirteen. What about the glass jars? Can you count the exact number? There are eight glass jars in this studio, including this broken one. Wendy asks her three students, who's responsible for this mess? Nina replies, I think it was David. He never washes his hands and clothes. He's such a weirdo. David says, it was Nina. She's just jealous because her paintings weren't selected for an art exhibition. And Amber says, I don't know who did it. Yesterday, I was feeling sick and stayed home. Who's responsible for this mess? Take a look at the canvas frames. They're all signed. The only canvas that wasn't torn has David's name on it. Therefore, he ruined the studio and his rival's works. Wendy asks her students to the park for an en plein air class. Can you see any weird details in this area? This is an apple tree. But why are there so many oranges under it? Two students have painted almost identical pictures. Can you help Wendy find three differences? Here they are. What about these portraits? Can you spot three differences? Over here. After the class, Wendy is trying to leave the park and gets lost. She has to walk through this confusing maze. Can you help her find the way out? Only the first path is correct. On the way home, Wendy enters a supermarket. Can you count the number of cacti? Six. Someone had broken the most expensive car in the parking lot near Wendy's apartment building. The police interrogate three witnesses to find out who is guilty. Carl says, This is my car. I parked it as usual and went home. Wendy woke me up with her call. Gia says, I was just having a yoga class in a studio nearby. This car belongs to my ex-boyfriend Carl. Too bad he loved this car more than me. And Peter says, Carl's my neighbor, but he's not my best friend, if you know what I mean. I've been working all day and just arrived. Who broke Carl's car? It was Gia. She's hiding a baseball bat inside her yoga mat. Just look at this. A car has crashed into a restaurant window, smashing it. Uh -oh. Detective Harris has come to investigate the case. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas. But each of them claims that the other person did it. Can you help the detective figure out who is lying?
It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and another customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him $5.05.